Hi, my name's Tom with Easy RV Products, and today I'm going to talk to you about our Easy Tire T515 Tire Pressure and Temperature Monitoring System, or TPMS system. One of the most common questions we get is why should we buy your system, or why is your system better than anyone else's? We don't do business like that. We feel that it's our job to educate you about our system and what we have to offer how we stand behind it and then we invite you to go out and shop the competition then you'll understand why the easy tire TPMS system is the system of choice we offer one of the largest monitors on the market when it comes to TPMS systems we offer a full screen three and a half inches the monitor has a built-in lithium-ion battery that will hold the charge up to 60 hours between charging and we also give you a hardwire kit and an auxiliary charger to go with it. The monitor has a built-in motion sensor so if it doesn't sense a vibration within 15 minutes it will automatically go into energy saver mode. As soon as it senses a vibration it will come back up to full power. The monitor also has a built-in light meter so as it starts to get dark outside or you run your hand in front of it the backlight will come on. It may be a little bit hard to see in this in these conditions but at least you can see how easy it is to view the monitor and view the monitor even from a distance so we monitor five things we monitor low pressure high pressure high temperature rapid air loss and catastrophic failure and we give you three types of warnings we give you it's an audible beep 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 the red light will go off on your screen and I've set this up to show you it shows you in plain English low pressure high pressure high temperature or fast leak whatever your problem is and that's the nice thing about the large monitor some of the smaller monitors due to their size constraints rely on icons the only problem is when the alarm goes off you have to try to remember what the icon stands for as well and what your problem is this way you're going to know just by glancing at the screen what your problem is the system will monitor up to 22 tires so the configuration will look exactly the way your rig is configured. It can show your front axle, your dual axle, if you had a tag axle you could show one uh, tire on each side here and if you had a toad or a trailer or if you have a big rig it's going to be set up to show exactly how your trailer is configured or your toad is configured. And as you can see by the numbers on the screen I programmed four tires into this one so you can see how the screen actually operates. The system every six seconds will cycle from tire to tire and as that tire flashes it's going to show you the pressure in the box on the left and the temperature on the box on the right and as it cycles to the next tire it'll show you that so it's continually monitoring your tires so at any time you can just look up at the screen and see how your tires are going it also gives you the capability of cycling from tire to tire by using your plus or minus keys and so you don't have to wait for a full cycle to go through. Some of the other nice features uh, of our system is we offer both a flow through sensor and an anti-theft sensor. You have your choice between the two or you can actually mix and match and combine the two sensors on your rig. The flow through sensor are two and a half inches long and you can see that you don't have to remove the sensor to, in order to check your tire pressure or to put air through here. You can just fill it through the sensor. Our anti-theft sensor you install it using the small wrench here you put it onto the tire and if someone tries to steal it it's just going to spin in their hand my personal preference is always has always been the anti-theft sensor um, the reason being it's one inch compared to two and a half inches in terms of operating they operate exactly the same they interact with the monitor exactly the same the biggest complaint with the flow through sensors are you have to think now you've got three valves you're going through you've got two Schrader valves and an internal valve here and unless you have a compressor with good continuous flow these can be a slow fill sometimes and that's the major complaint with these other than that they operate the same I definitely never recommend a flow through sensor on any type of towed vehicle or standard trailer for the fact that they'll stick out past the rim and if you happen to clip a curb on a tight turn you risk damaging the sensor or your valve stem. The other nice thing about our anti-theft sensor is this is a competitor's anti-theft sensor this is our anti-theft sensor. These have a battery rating typically of one to two years. We use a high efficiency German IC board which allows us to reduce the size of our sensor by about a third but it's also rated to a three to four year battery life. With your system we give you three types of mounts. We give you this suction cup mount that can go on your windshield or your dash. We give you a low profile mount that you can put in any of the holes on the back and adjust the angle. And this is actually the mount that I use and I just put a piece of velcro on the back. 
and it just sits on the dash like that. And we give you this fixed mount that you can bolt down and using the articulating head from the suction cup mount, you can still put the bolt it down and still pivot the head of the, or the monitor to adjust it to your need. A lot of people will just put Velcro on the back as well and if they have a blind spot or a blank spot on their uh, dashboard, they'll just stick it to the dashboard using the Velcro. All of our sensors have replaceable batteries. It's a standard CR1632 battery that you can pick up at Walmart at your jewelry counter or the best place to get them is on Amazon. That's the easiest to get them. And to change a battery, it's very, very simple. I'm just going to remove the anti-theft housing from the sensor. This is what the actual sensor looks like itself. I just place it into the to the wrench the reverse way and I twist it off and hopefully you can see this, this is the battery in here and all you do is just push the battery out, install the new one there's a little o-ring in here and I just place the cap back on like that. Now one of the questions that some people say is well I don't want to use the anti-theft housing, it's a pain in the rear, it's hard for me to get the wrench in there and that's perfectly fine. A lot of people will go ahead and use the sensor just like this screw it on by hand. One of the recommend recommendations that I make is even though this has an o-ring in here I always take a little bit of silicone and I seal up around the seam where the two halves screw together that way if you ever do end up parked in standing water or anything you've got a sealed system if you want to put the anti-theft housing on it just screws right back on like that and that's it the other probably the last thing I want to talk about before we talk about boosters which is also a common question is whenever I add a sensor or anything onto my valve stems I always use a little bit of anti-seize compound. I just put it on my finger, I run it around the threads of the valve stem, and that takes care of the concern of corrosion due to dissimilar metals and people worried about the sensors getting stuck on there. We do use uh, brass inserts to minimize the, uh, the risk of any corrosion in there, but it's just a good practice to use a little bit of anti-seize compound. And lastly, we're going to talk about boosters. In the past, we used to recommend boosters at about 53 feet, and that what a booster does that it amplifies the signal from all of your sensors and retransmits it to the monitor. And so in, if you ever get any drop off or you lose a signal from your furthest tires, the booster compensates for that. Nowadays with some of the big diesel uh, pushers, there's so much electronics going on back in the engine compartment that you can get interference even on tires that are closer on your inside duals or your outside duals. And a booster uh, will overcome that interference. A booster is an optional item. They typically run $49 and all they do is they mount in your aft compartment or some people will put them in their closet and it's just a hot lead in the ground and it just wires into your compartment or closet light and uh, when there's power going to it the red light in the middle will light up and that's all you need to do there's nothing else and I want to thank you for watching my name is Tom I handle the tech support for our easy tire TPMS systems and always feel free to contact us with any questions you have about our systems we can be reached at customer relations at easy rvproducts.com with two E's or you can reach me directly at Tom Robertson R-O-B-E-R-T-S-O-N at ezrvproducts.com again with two E's and uh, don't be bashful we're here to help